Awesome, awesome. Let's start. I think um, everybody is perfectly audible. Hi, everyone. Welcome to um, Space by Finflow. Um, we are having uh, Ajinkya, uh, who is the co-founder and CEO of Wind Wealth. It's an amazing startup. One of one of the most interesting ones. Uh, I love it. And uh, even everybody here loves it. Whoever is on this uh, speaker panel, uh, and uh, I, I was introduced to Windwell uh, by just Kirat. He told me about you and Windwell and everything. Uh, the the interesting things you were doing uh, with dead funds. Um, also, Ajinkya is very quite famous on LinkedIn. Uh, his posts are pretty uh, like share shared a lot in uh, our community. So I had to call him for a space. Uh, his views on personal finance are amazing and uh, very different. Uh, so hi, Ajinkya. Hey, uh, thanks, thanks, Aryan, for the kind words, and uh, really happy to be here. Yeah, and looking forward to awesome. actually discuss and learn uh, the giving gap. So yeah, yeah, we are here all to learn. Uh, we are here to learn from you. Uh, okay, so I'll I'll start with a very basic thing that war. Like we'll start with personal finance, then go into uh, deeper topics. Uh, so broadly, what are the key elements of personal finance that everybody should look into? I think, uh, like, uh, and you can go as deep as possible. I think sequence is very important, right? First, you get the term insurance, health insurance, emergency fund. Then you figure out asset allocation, and then you uh, look at mutual funds, equity, or mutual like products or ETC, right? But people directly jump to this stock, this mutual fund, this asset. Uh, this bond ATC rate. I think uh, I think uh, that's that's not the right approach. Uh, the very basic thing is to start uh, in the sequence, right? If you miss the sequence, doesn't like whatever returns you make, uh, those are just temporary. I mean, uh, you like you will like you will not manage it well, and anyway, you will end up in a bad position. Right. So, so what's the first thing that every person should do? Is it a, a emergency fund or is it insurance? I think insurance. I will uh, rate it before also emergency rate, right? Uh, right? Because uh, emergency, at least, I mean, uh, like you would create an emergency out of six to twelve months, right? Uh, and like if it it comes to that, you can actually borrow or something. But health insurance and term insurance, right, are very critical. Health insurance, especially. I mean, with the different kind of, uh, you know, uh, like different kind of diseases, uh, specialized hospital, the cost go through a roof, right? So uh, there is a huge capital loss that can happen if you are not insured well. Plus, uh, obviously, if you get catch something before you take health insurance, then those diseases or uh, that can't be covered, right? So health term and then, uh, you know, uh, obviously emergency fund and then everything else. Right, right. Uh, so uh, how I see it is basically personal finance is like a pyramid, uh, which is uh, based on survival survivability. So you have to build the base first, and then uh, go uh, like go on putting bricks on it. Um, initially, you have to focus on survival, and then uh, everything comes next. Uh, and once yes. you are at that level, then investment starts. Then then the question about growing your money. Uh, yeah, I think I look at it very differently. Rather than pyramid, I I looking at I look at it from a timeline uh, point of view, right? So when you invest in stocks, you are saying, okay, this stock is gonna take care of me ten years down the line, right? But you haven't taken care of something wrong happens today, right? So you keep securing timeline, right? Uh, so you first secure today, then tomorrow, then one month, six months, twelve months, and then eventually you keep broadening that horizon, right? And once you have uh, secured enough. Uh, wealth that is uh, good for your life then you can retire so uh, i think it's more than pyramid i think you should keep on going securing by timelines right secure today tomorrow one month 10 months whatever i mean keep extending that time awesome awesome right uh, yeah actually has some questions actually and is content yeah. so and yeah we'll take day from hey. hey ajinkya how are you i'm good i'm good i'm good akshat how are you uh, always, always. So, you know, like basically personal finance and I've been interested in it, in it since I was 18, I'm 22 now. And, you know, I locally uh, like and love basically, you know, low risk and debt funds basically, mm -hmm. right? 
so my question is ke, like you know like what is the importance of debt funds in personal finance like why should a person invest in debt funds when they are planning their overall finance and you know investment portfolio and stuff like what is the why of debt fund i think uh, people need to experience this i mean if you uh, like see personal finance is also becoming wiser right so that means becoming wise is a process of uh, you know gaining that experience or le- learning from other mistake where you don't have to pay a price right uh, like most of young people like you who have entered in the market in last uh, you know uh, two three years have seen this a bull run so you do like you have you, you haven't yet experienced very emotionally what happens when market crashes really really fast and really really like there is a, a drawdown or so much right so if you learn it from other experiences all these people will tell you asset allocation should be there right that means uh, right if you have any money that is le- yes 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 sorry i mean uh, twitter threw me out some i don't know why uh, yeah so the point i was trying to make is if you have any money that, like if you look at from asset allocation point of view right if you have any money that you want before 5 years it should not be in equity products so uh, it is just question of that right so all your emergency fund uh, all your uh, money that you need before 5 years should be in debt products fixed income products could be fd or could be in, could be wind based like products or anything or could be any other products but those should be debt based products right uh, it cannot be equity based products right 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 so you know it is it, it's a debt fund just balances out the you know market breakdown or something of that sort and you know to basically has the risk debt funds are really really important right yes but i mean uh, in india i think i don't think debt funds are that attractive for retail investors right because uh, uh, this there is arbitrage in the fds right so fds are uh, especially for retail investors fd up to 5 lakhs are guaranteed uh, by, by government of india right so uh, i would rather book if rather than going for a debt fund i will rather book a fd with a small finance bank per se right 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 So, you know like that was bringing like you know that was my next question actually you know like why retail investor investors are not actually so much you know passionate or you know like aware about debt funds as much as they are about equity basically you know like after the scam 1992 series happened or something you know like even lockdown 1 to like you know people got really excited about all this like stock market equity investment and hmm. stuff so, you know like why is indian mindset works such in such a way that you know they don't consider debt funds as a part of investment like you know when a newbie enters the market he just thinks equity 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 yeah. you know like why not debt fund like what is the reason behind this slow awareness like what makes debt fund less attractive or you know less thrilling than equity basically yes uh, for you yeah so i think uh, uh... the the problem is not with fixed income products i mean if you look at it retail investors money right more than trillion is parked in fds etc right so debt access debt mein koi problem nahi debt fund mein problem hai right uh, so uh, and the money parked in fixed income products is about 7 8 times compared to money parked in equity assets either equity mutual fund or direct stocks right uh, the problem with uh, debt mutual fund is there is a like Uh, a bank offering 4% fd let's say triple a rated bank offering 4% fd and a uh, and a triple b minus or even let's say non rated bank offering a uh, 7% fd the technically the risk is simple same credit risk especially the if not, like if the bank goes bankrupt now the government has also said uh, within the 90 days they will pay off the retail investors right so there is this arbitrage that makes debt make debt funds very like little uninteresting for retail investors right if you see credit risk funds today they are gi- giving about 7% uh, return rate i mean so and then there is additional complexity as interest rate move the uh, the interest uh, the returns actually can go up or some of the times uh, for one quarter mutual fund that some of the debt mutual fund have booked uh, negative returns right so this uh, there is a, a additional uh, complexity but i think retail investors are smart enough they would have figured out a way if there was some arbitrage i think the real problem is there is no arbitrage and because and that there is in fact arbitrage towards fd right and that's what uh, that's why we see most of the retail investors taking with fds right hello can you hear me yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i can hear you i think after this having problems yep so so if 
debt funds are so safe then like and and they they earn you without fail am i audible aryan yeah yeah you're you're back you're back okay okay cool go ahead go ahead yeah so uh, if if debt funds are so safe and you can earn without fail then should we like should we all prefer them over fds no 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 i mean uh, the thing is that they are not like there can be a chances of default but given that there are fairly uh, diversified uh, i think uh, i don't see much of a, uh, a risk adjusted return uh, right Compa- and obviously uh, like uh, there is additional education needed uh, especially if, uh, and the returns are very much correlated with interest rate return, uh, interest rate cycles right it makes sense to uh, invest in debt mutual fund when the interest rate is super high and going to go down but currently it is completely opposite right? so i i i am not like i don't think it's i would personally not invest in debt funds in uh, in next uh, you know two three years at least it doesn't make sense to me okay okay uh, so w- what is different with wind wealth then sure. like, what does wind wealth do and uh, what like what kind of debt assets are in yeah there? so these are individual bonds right uh, with uh, two three year maturity right and uh, these are bonds uh, which give you a fixed interest so if you hold till maturity you will get that interest in if the interest rate environment changes that's number one second is i mean obviously these bonds are higher yield bonds 9 to 11 percent return so they definitely come with higher risk right uh, if they are people sometimes ask us come and ask us hey is this a replacement for fd we say no fds are low risk this is a high risk the beauty of the product is this risk are mitigated well by certain actions right so uh, if i so like we can go through the risk right so there are three risk involved uh, with these bonds one is liquidity risk second is you know credit risk and third is uh, you know uh, the fraud risk right so and these risk are mitigated well by doing different things by structuring it well by letting people know how to invest etc right uh, so uh, therefore these bonds and these are individual bonds not debt funds right so debt funds give about 7% today uh, i mean i'm not i'm not uh, i'm removing the uh either losses or profit because of interest rate changes but uh, similar category like credit risk debt funds would give you about 7% these bonds give you 9 to 11% so there is some uh, like increase in returns right about 2 3% higher than fds and that's what then it makes sense for, for retail investors to consider and invest right? uh, so there are three risk involved right uh, one is liquidity risk second is credit risk uh, third is fraud risk right and how we mitigate is liquid so i'll explain the risk also for everyone so that uh, like if people have questions we can take those also so liquidity risk is two kind of liquidity risk is there so let's say a bond has a maturity of 2 years so some entity has basically taken the money and they have promised that they will return this money after 2 years right now you cannot go back to them after 6 months and say i need my money so give me back right? they will obviously have their cash flow measured and uh, mapped accordingly so they will only give after 2 2 years right so you, so and if the entity goes bankrupt then there will be it will take some time to recover your money so these are two liquidity risk right how do you mit- how do we mitigate that risk is we first facilitate secondary uh, liquidity right so if you invest in these bonds you want to exit after 6 months uh, then if there is an interesting buyer then we match it right so but still it, that doesn't make sure that there will be liquidity 100% of the time on all the bonds right uh, so, so but till now that there has been a liquidity in the market uh sec- so and the bankruptcy risk come I in mean, then uh, on that bankruptcy risk we also tell people don't park your emergency fund here or uh, invest with a mindset of holding till maturity third the third way of mitigating bankruptcy risk is we ask people that if you plan to invest let's say uh, 1 lakh on the platform invest 10000 across 10 bonds right don't invest don't invest all the amount in one bond right so then you are taking too much of a concentration less liquidity risk etc that's not a right way to approach so in like diversify across at least 10 assets on the platform so that's how we try to uh, like that's how we mitigate liquidity risk second is great uh, risk right so uh, now coming to the uh, these bonds so currently these bonds are issued by non banking financial uh, companies like nbfcs where they give retail loans right so uh, for for any bond we generally take so if the bond Uh, issue is of 100 crores uh, there is a 120 crore collateral that is taken and that collateral basically means loan outstanding right which is always there so if entity fails to repay the repayments from these uh, so 120 crore uh, outstanding can, uh, are claimed by the investors right uh, 
second i mean uh, we do thorough due diligence of the every underlying loan and uh, like then only bring the platform uh, we also do a thorough due diligence on the, of the nbfc rate so uh, there is a criteria of selecting the nbfc so that credit risk is mitigated uh, there are de- like there is a very detailed criteria we can talk about that as well all right so we try to keep the credit risk low right uh, and third is fraud risk promoter fraud risk especially right if the promoters do the fraud then there is a risk so uh, i mean uh, we we have applied a lot of technology to mitigate that risk plus we do a lot of market uh, you know we call it a smell test internally so we basically get a feedback about those promoters and and the management from the market and that's and that's one of the criteria of selecting the nbfc so at winfield we are basically bringing these curated set of bonds right it's not a open marketplace that anybody can come and list their bonds before listing that bond we do thorough diligence on the nbfc on the deal and if that passes our our criteria then only we bring it on the plat awesome awesome uh, yeah i saw just kirits hand up uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah i think i think i had the question of uh, risk on the and then uh, uh, i think uh, i explained it beautifully so i want, want to know like uh, i've been following uh, 2012 for over a year now so uh, correct me if i'm wrong uh, that you guys have a, a different set in which like uh, there's one automobile uh, loans uh, one like in which you uh, you invest in automobile loan back So, yeah like so, uh, bonds yeah different so, different bonds have different underlying portfolios some of the bonds had uh, you know uh, gold loan uh, as underlying loan some of them had property loan some of them had vehicle loans the latest asset on the platform has half of the loans are property and half of are unsecured basically personal loans right yeah. uh, so yeah, yeah. yeah so i have a question on that like is there a way that uh, you guys also have like multiple uh, different bonds and create a whole bunch of it and then uh, issue it to to reduce risk uh, we are in the process of bringing such products currently we are able to we are bringing only uh, singular bonds every individual bonds right and we ask people to diversify but idea is to bring 10 bonds together and let people diversify at one go and that is the product we are working on it will be out sometime soon great great Awesome, awesome, got it. Uh, so, so there's a question that I got in a DM, and this is a very, I think, valid one. Uh, so a lot of people who are not, who don't understand personal finance, have this basic question that what is bond, and what are, what are we exactly investing in, and why should we invest in them? Like, जब company में करते हैं तब like business में करते हैं and wo business grow karta hai to then we make money so what is a bond and bond se paisa kaise kamate hain matlab wo cheez entity paisa kaise kamati hai understood so uh, bond matlab uh, agar ha, agar ek individual ko paisa chahiye to wo loan pe le sakta hai right business wo bond like business ka loan bond is one of the instrument through which it uh, uh, it raises money right so इक्विटी में क्या होता है कि बेसिकली व्हेन अ कंपनी रेजेस इक्विटी इट बेसिकली सेज वील शेयर प्रॉफिट्स राइट सो अपसाइड भी आ गया डाउन साइड भी आ गया इफ द कंपनी ग्रोज फास्ट कंपनी मेक्स मोर प्रॉफिट पीपल विल मेक मोर मनी इफ कंपनी डजन मेक मनी पीपल वोंट मेक मनी इनफैक्ट द कैपिटल माइट रिड्यूस आल्सो इफ द कंपनी स्टार्ट्स मेकिंग लॉसेस वेरी सिंपलिस्टिकली पुट राइट इन द बॉन्ड द कंपनी इज बेसिकली सेइंग टू द बॉन्ड होल्डर और टू द लेंडर बेसिकली व्हेन यू आर बाइंग अ बॉन्ड ऑफ अ एनी कंपनी और एनी बिजनेस यू आर लेंडिंग मनी टू देम वेरी सिंपल राइट so they are saying we will pay you fixed interest whether we make profit or loss we are giving you this much interest right so that's that's what a bond is okay a drink you know this i had this question like you know like what are other ways a person can invest in you know debt funds other than debt mutual fund like is there any other method or you know like wind well based another platform like you know this has two questions like what is the second method for investing in you know debt funds and how is you know like windwell to so simplifying like as you said you know it, you uh, you know you do all the research and stuff so like how is it different from debt funds like debt mutual funds say no. windwell kaise differentiate ho jata hai basically no. debt mutual fund mein you in like debt mutual fund ke alag alag type rehte hai liquid ye wo so us type mein you invest right and there is a diversified exposure there plus there is a lot of liquidity right uh but because uh, like because the way it functions or because probably the regulations are uh, there uh, the returns of debt mutual fund uh, will be very different from individual asset class right? 
सो लेट मी एक्सप्लेन सो एक स्टॉक होता है वो स्टॉक का बास्केट बन के इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड बनता है वैसे एक बॉन्ड होता है बहुत सारे बॉन्ड का बास्केट बन के देर इज डेट म्यूचुअल फंड राइट सो इक्विटी स्टॉक स्टॉक लाइक अ बास्केट ऑफ स्टॉक्स इज इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड बास्केट ऑफ बॉन्ड्स इज प्रोबली पैक्ट इन अ डेट म्यूचुअल फंड राइट सो यू कैन इन्वेस्ट इन डेट म्यूचुअल फंड और यू कैन इन्वेस्ट इन इंडिविजुअल बॉन्ड्स अनफॉर्चुनेटली देर आर एंट एनी इंडिविजुअल लाइक देर आर एंट लॉट इंडिविजुअल बॉन्ड्स फॉर रिटेल इन्वेस्टर्स मोस्ट ऑफ देम आर इन लाइक मोस्ट ऑफ द बॉन्ड्स आर बॉट बाई ट्रेडिशनल इन्वेस्टर्स Right, so Windwell is uh, you know allowing retail investors like us to allow in this bond, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, yes. Okay, okay. So you know, like that brings to my que- next question that you know, government securities and GSEP bills are now in. So you know, like how will that affect the bond market overall? I don't think it it will affect. I mean, government has been borrowing. Uh, GSEP uh, are getting open to retail investors, right? Uh, but uh, like, I mean, we are yet to see how it will unfold, right? इंडेक्सेशन बेनिफिटर थ्री इन सो like uh, broadly speaking it comes about about 10% after 3 years if you withdraw before 3 years it is as per slab okay 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 are in would you like to proceed further yeah yeah uh, uh, just kirit has a hand up yeah uh, so uh, i have a question like uh, how is like normal debt fund different from uh, dynamic debt fund then dynamic debt fund uh i don't like i don't know specific so i mean uh, i don't know about dynamic specifically right uh, i'll and check but uh, so mutual fund are basically categorized according to uh, two three things right uh, one is tenure how, like what is the underlying tenure of the bond uh, on an average i mean there is some certain formula but uh, what is the underlying bond is like most of the bonds are three months six months 12 months or like and based on that uh, the the type of fund is decided so liquid is uh, you can withdraw fast overnight sir over. so all these are very short term funds right and the long terms are really long 10 year 15 year right so that is one criteria second is on the basis of risk and that risk is measured by rating broadly i mean uh, obviously there are some flaws in the rating methodologies but uh, t- like if it is government then these are like super safe triple a rated right so and then basically rating wise there are also funds so Uh, a rated kind of funds are all like generally credit risk funds right and triple a rated uh, so there are two uh, ways to segregate mutual fund one is on the debt mutual fund one is basis tenure and second is basis the uh, risk that they take for returns and higher the risk higher the return yeah uh, can you hear just kirat i think is yeah yeah Uh, okay. Not picking it. Thank okay, okay. So, um, I think uh, like this is a very basic thing that um everybody should know. So, what do you think is like? Wh- why don't Indians have exposure towards bonds? Uh, when like in like even in the intelligent investor and everywhere, it's it's like bonds are very important as an asset. Uh, I mean. there is a thumb rule that you should allocate this much to equities this much to uh, bonds so like uh, and uh, almost all of uh, like all of india is not really aware about bonds like how, how are you improving that and like what what's the reason for this uh, i think uh, th- that, that's right i think the main reason that comes to my mind is uh, there is arbitrage in fds right so since fds have been giving good return Uh, uh right people people are stick, have been sticking with fds and now once the fd rate were low like in last two years we saw a lot of movement right that was because first time we have seen such a low fd rates right so then people are say, seeking uh, better returns and therefore looking out till now fds were giving such a good return in fixed income asset class that people were sticking to it right and especially 
the risk is super super low right uh, for retail investors i mean most of the investors will have fd below 5 lakh uh, right so uh, and even like rbi has made sure that most of the cases uh, people don't lose out money uh, rbi has tried to save the banks and at that's a right step obviously right uh, so therefore people are were not excited uh, for bonds so either it is fd or there is equity therefore we we had this massive white space where like now we are coming and creating products there right but it's mainly because of the fact that fd have been giving good return till now at least uh, before 2 years right uh, so how how much how much should be be like allocation be like uh, at least for now uh, in wind well door um, and and versus equity yeah i mean so that is that is a very personal question right but we generally as a thumb rule tell anyone that don't allocate more than 10% on wind well platform of your portfolio conservatively 5% right and that also diversify across lot of assets a uh, lot of bonds right and bonds is first asset class we have come up with we will bring many more asset classes right uh, but idea is uh, don't over expose yourself just because this sounds good or the return sound very exciting don't go beyond 10% of your portfolio uh, stick to uh, ideally 5 to 10% and that across that also should be uh, diversified across 10 bonds on the platform okay and and what about uh, um, general cash like when, when we have cash what should we do with it um, and like so usually people go for debt mutual funds uh, how much allocation should we give to that uh, debt uh, versus equity and especially for i'm, I'm asking for someone who is in their 30s or like uh, late 20s something like that uh, could you could you repeat the question yeah so for someone who is in his or her late 20s or 30s what should be the allocation be like for uh, debt mutual funds or any kind of fixed income assets versus equities uh, because like we are in the age of taking risks and uh, equities looks very lucrative at least right now yeah so what should be our allocation i mean be? i cannot give a obviously it should be less than half for sure and that scale will vary for every person very differently and it's not just about age or uh, just salary it also has to do a lot with uh, are the both members of the family earning how's your background do you have to support your parents do you are, are your parents covered in health insurance right uh, and because especially i mean i i saw some of the western models right there the society is very structured differently uh like people you are not expected to take care of your parents right in india obviously that's not the case right uh so these things vary a lot uh, especially uh, what are the kind of responsibilities you have what are the kind of assets you have what are the kind of loans you have all right uh, so there is no one answer for everyone but it should be obviously less than half very broadly speaking very broadly i mean obviously there will be exceptions yes so basically personal finances are very personal thing and um, there are thumbs rules there are set of rules that you can follow but uh, you should design it for yourself everything Absolutely. should be very uh, like perfectly aligned to your thing and your credit, uh, risk profile uh, yeah uh, akshat uh, oh sorry uh, tishan yes, tishan no, uh, jinkya actually you know like i was uh, you know wondering that what what was that one step in your personal finance that made you so much excited about debt fund and why did you started win 12 like you know basically out of all the hyper equity and stuff like what was that one step basically in your personal finance journey and in your in your investment journey yeah. basically that motivated and you know not like hyped you up to start something in the debt fund category yes so it is not a debt fund category we are not a debt fund i mean just want to put that across very clearly Uh, what ex- should we okay, call it debt asset yeah, yeah debt asset uh, uh, fixed income yeah. Sorry, sorry, my bad yeah, my bad yeah debt asset right so what we realize i mean indians have this crazy obsession with fixed income products right uh, and there are no great fixed income products for retail investors there are some great assets but those are those are available for ultra rich people hnis and sorts right and uh, like i came from a lending background and i could see these assets uh, right and i couldn't invest in them so i myself wanted to invest and like uh, i want to invest in this and they were not available so i started researching more uh, why they are not available and eventually like realized them I and these should be available and nobody is doing it so we said we said let's do it okay okay that is exciting so you know like how do companies agree like you know companies obviously will want that some you know hni category investors or you know even 
big companies you know invest in bonds and you know fixed income category so like how did you know companies took up when you went to them and uh, you know said that retail investors now could you know do this thing and stuff basically no i mean these companies want money from retail investors also right uh, for them uh, and especially we work with nbfcs uh, which are where which are uh, in the primary business of lending money so for them money is like raw material right uh, so they need a diversified source of capital and every nbfc wants uh, supply of retail capital unfortunately that market wasn't like wasn't there we are creating that market right so uh, for them like for, for these companies uh, they were always excited to learn from uh, like raise money from retail investors the reason is i mean they have lot of money they could raise from banks but banks have their own cycle like cycle of uh, capital right if one event happens even if there are 10 banks they will most likely react in similar fashion right uh, on a very macro level right so they need different sources of capital and they like every nbfc has this ambition of raising money from retail they didn't have skill set or bandwidth to do it and we are doing it for them so they were pretty excited we didn't face any challenge on that side okay okay that sounds interesting because you know i was very much skeptical on that not like how would companies react Absolutely. and you know like recently the budget is going to like you know it is around the corner so and there are predictions that atc limits would be increased so you know do you see any like investors excitement you know towards that fund or overall investment in general like if this happens like you know from 1.5 lakh to 2.5 lakh uh i think i mean uh, people like uh, I, i i don't know i mean what will happen whether it will happen or not right uh, because a lot of things uh, are dependent on that and like uh, sentiments keep changing right but broader in long term everything adjusts people uh, people take uh, more or less rational decisions once the tide is over right uh, so uh, like let's see how it goes i mean i don't really think uh, I, i i haven't really thought about how it will uh, affect the investor mindset or how it will play out because before every budget session we keep hearing so many of these things that ye hone wala ye hone wala ye increase hone wala ye tax in uh, and i've seen it i've heard it many times so now i say ki yaar hone do fir dekhte hain right uh so like this is the basic question for everyone that how how do we how how do people from the finflow community and everyone here uh, start with windwells like there are multiple products so uh, it's it's quite confusing to so how how do we start yeah i mean first is uh, go through one of the like whenever asset comes we do webinar if you have time go through that webinar or like uh, I'll, i'll i can share a link and that can be floated in finflow about a 15 20 minute video uh that should explain everything uh start small right if uh, diversify don't like don't invest a lot and if you're can if you're confused uh, how much amount should i invest start small start understanding the asset right and uh, then as you understand as you see returns as you get the dynamics of the asset class after 3 months 6 months 9 months 12 months whenever you feel comfortable then start increasing the exposure right don't over expose to the start what is important in different asset classes starting is very important however small you start you start understanding how it functions it keeps uh, ruminating in your brain and eventually uh, you start understanding and getting a deeper sense right so starting is very important uh, the amount doesn't matter at the start get like uh, getting on that path of investing is very important in and the best part is you can start by with 10000 yes yes <laughs> that is great Yeah. Uh, Tisha, uh, you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, hi, everyone. Good evening. So, I just had one question. Like, since in this scenario of like uncertainty of like interest rates uh, going up, so how do you see it affecting the returns on bonds, or for that matter, its valuations too? uh bonds i mean they keep adjusting as the as the market rate increase our products rate uh, the assets rate will also increase right as the repo rate and other other products uh, so i don't see that affecting i mean it's a very temporary aberration debt mutual fund uh, uh, will get affected uh, the secondary bond market will get more affected uh, by uh, and it does as as anyways with the interest rate change right but from primary asset sense i don't think uh, anything will majorly change if these rate the base rate changes increases these asset rates will also change Every, everything i mean accordingly there is some lag but even fd rates will increase a little bit or bond, the bonds on our platform 
they will be they will also yield more oh uh, yeah uh, yeah yeah i got uh, got cleared my doubt got cleared and the other thing i wanted to ask about the correlation between the bond market and the equity market so like if anything like in this recession like uh, the covid phase also the equity market went down so uh, is the correlation between equity and debt too high or can the bond market be used as a hedge against equity uh, so sorry the can, yeah yeah that that's it yeah i think uh i think there is a slight nuance here between hedging and mitigating right so uh hedging is you actively like whatever is the outcome if that outcome doesn't come then you try to hedge it right so suppose you buy something else that mitigating is basically you figure out if this is going to happen how am i going to lower that uh, basically you balance it well right uh so you he like uh, you hedge the same like you try to hedge against the same output but mitigation is for a broader outputs right so uh, uh like i don't really think that there is a lot of correlation i mean sometimes it's there it's it's not there uh th- in theoretical sense there should be correlation but uh, we have seen lot of aberrations right i think people should stick to their asset allocation and keep uh, keep investing accordingly right uh so that that's what that's what i think Awesome, awesome. Uh, this there's also another thing that is coming up and um g- getting a lot of attention. That is P two P lending. Uh, so what do you think about that? And like, should we allocate towards that normal retail investment? So I'm not at all a fan of P two P lending, and that's mainly because of how the regulations have structured it, right? And we are we we are also looking to we are also looking to work in P two P paradigm, right? The biggest challenge is uh. like there is no institutional skin in the game that is allowed right so uh, the, the platform cannot provide any guarantee third party guarantee any kind of guarantee uh, so even if there is a loss that happens it has to be passed on to investors right plus on the other side also the borrowers the loan cannot be secured in any way right it cannot be collateral back loan it has to be unsecured loan right so uh, therefore it may, like it's a very shaky value proposition in my mind currently right uh, and mainly the challenge is uh, not challenge i think i mean uh, the regulator has a view why it, it has to be so but regulation has has made that challenge like has made the regulation in such a way that uh, it i don't think in my mind it's very attractive right uh, yeah yeah just kidding yeah so uh, so i have a question like uh, for example if a market is volatile or it drops then uh, is there a high chance of uh, defaults in bonds uh, or this completely no relation or a little bit relation there should be relation but like there are so many variables that i don't think like uh, uh, there is some sort of correlation and there but there is no causation as such thank you mm-hmm, yes i really like that also uh, so uh, yeah uh, So you like let's come back to personal finance for a while then. Uh, sure. So you've seen the COVID crisis, whatever happened. Uh, we saw like a Fed printed out money. We saw uh, crazy returns on the stock market. Uh, everything combined. What do you think of the post COVID world? And uh, now people are slightly more financially literate or aware. Actually, we don't. We can't say literate. They they more aware. uh slight, just because of uh, because it's incentivized now because of the high returns in equity uh now what 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 kind of scenario do you think we'll have later on with investments in general and like india in general uh, towards person finance uh and what what's going to happen in this space i like i think i mean uh there are very two different set of questions what will happen to market obviously nobody knows right uh, Uh, you, uh, like i would like to know as much as i can but obviously nobody can predict and it market will always have its own uh, like dynamic sensei uh, i think if you look at from from people angle i mean uh, people are coming fast uh, and the adoption has been super fast once these digital channels are open 
ಬೇಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಸ್ಟಾಕ್ ರೇಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಆಧಾರ್ ವೆರಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಇ ಟಿ ಸಿ ನಾವು ಅಕೌಂಟ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಗೇಟರ್ ಇ ಟಿ ಸಿ ಸೊ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ವಿಲ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಇನ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಜಿಟಲಿ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಒಬ್ವಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆರ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಲೈಕ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಐ ಐ ಗೆಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೋ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಯಂಗರ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಟಿ ಸೊ ಯಂಗರ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಡಿಸಿಜನ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದಟ್ ಟ್ರೆಂಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ವಿಲ್ ಆಕ್ಸಲರೇಟ್ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ಗೋ ಸೊ most of like for digital wealth players this is going to be a fabulous ticket for sure for sure uh, and uh, since our product and everything is based on um, helping people make better choices and uh, not losing out when the market ultimately falls or does something uh, what what kind of advice do you give on equity investments uh, how do we make better choices and how, what's what's your personal way to do it if you invest in equity yeah so i've been i, I don't actually uh, i like i'm only i i have invested in stocks but those are mainly uh, through kind of a friend come advisor so he takes care of that i don't look at them on mutual fund i mean keep the sip on i mean there is <clears throat> whether market goes up down keep the sip on i mean as hard as, like it is a very simple thing to say but very hard thing to follow but lot of it is about discipline uh, than anything else right keep your sib is going yes it's the perfect way uh, invest in every environment and you're going to make a lot of money ultimately uh, and what are the how, how liquid are these debt instruments like uh, w- w- the debt assets of pentwell like how do we cash out yeah i mean once made? any asset gets subscribed we open it uh, we uh, we ask people to join the wait list for almost all the assets there is a wait list of 2000 people right so if you want to exit we basically ask uh, people in the wait list whether they want to invest and most so uh, liquidity has been there but it's not guaranteed i mean and i can like i can definitely uh, tell you that in 5 10 years somewhere there will be a point some of the bonds won't have liquidity at some point of time right uh, but broadly there is liquidity today uh, and nobody can guarantee that it will be there ever yep yep so uh, we have someone from the listeners amit uh, would you like to ask a question amit are you there i think he's not there uh, so if anybody wants to come up uh, we'll take five minutes questions and uh, then i have some interesting questions so sure you can just send in speak a request yeah till then i'll just ask my interesting question so uh, what what is the best personal finance book do you rec- you recommend i think i love your favorite yeah i love psychology of money rather like like anything it's it's like really timeless like uh, perfectly uska jo cover pe likha hua hai wahi hai yes uh, timeless lessons and any other um, overall me koi bhi padhne ka i'm i'm going to read uh, more but this one has like uh, i can relate to it uh, right uh, and it's very simple also right uh, i haven't given lot of break i haven't read lot of personal finance book most of the research is online available right but so uh, if i read personal finance book i would want them to share timeless knowledge and psychology of money fits right in there and in a very simple terms perfect perfect and um, any twitter account or linkedin account uh, you follow for uh, uh, anything related to personal finance or something like that i think there are a lot of lot of accounts who do really value like who do run, generate really valuable insights and valuable content but most of it is still very complex for retail investors right and what like why what worked on my linkedin or our linkedin was trying to simplify it right so i i think uh, more and obviously i don't like there are some accounts who do, who does it in a very simple fashion and uh, like i don't re- really act like since i've been reading a lot lot of things have become very simple in my mind so i can't really tell which is simple and which is complex but uh, yeah that's true that's true uh, but i see i see deepak sir down there uh, his account is amazing so if, like anybody wants to follow uh, you can follow deepak sir uh, absolutely and, and right uh, so 
what uh, how does someone redeem a bond before maturity and how does it affect our take home returns uh, if if we do that yeah i mean it's like bond is like an instrument right so how you sell equity shares you can sell bond also if it is listed and there is a buyer right and uh, you make return basis the like obviously uh, there is a general uh, like general rate like a very uh, at at the mark at which market operates right so you make that much return i mean uh, it is as good as equities but the returns are be, like little more predictable not little a very predictable act right so you sell that bond to someone else mm-hmm. that that's how you exit mm-hmm. yeah you sell that bond to someone else just like stocks it's just yes, like yes, stocks. Yes, right right Yep. So, so, so to everyone who's here, definitely check out, um, uh, like read a lot of our bonds because the awareness is quite low here. And um, read about wind felt. Re, uh, uh, if if Ajinki, can you can you share that um, video? If you sure, have sure. I'll, I'll definitely yeah. share. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I'll share it my in my account as well as well for as well. We. we really want uh, everybody should uh, everybody should be aware of uh, this because equity is not the only asset uh, even if you're young uh, equity is definitely not the only asset to invest in and you should definitely uh, diversify uh, like just have your bets right uh, okay sir tesha you want to take over yeah 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 i i i just have one question so uh, i wanted to ask you matlab if If we redeem our bond before the maturity, if we redeem our fixed income securities, so how does it affect our take-home returns? So because we won't get the promised YTM, which the bond told us. Yeah. So, yeah. No. So I mean, uh, what especially uh, like uh, I, like the broader market, there are a lot of factors. Whether there is liquidity, what is the come on Bintwell platform? What is secondary trading? We like we facilitate. It is always at par. So. Uh, like it is uh, what a ytm rate is right so it doesn't change so if the bond yield is let's say 10% when you exit you will get accrued interest or kind of a pro rata basis 10% and the person will also buy with a 10% uh, expectation also right so on windwell platform we have made sure that we only facilitate at par transaction and not really uh, basis the interest rate changes Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Um. I think I read your tweet or uh, LinkedIn post somewhere about uh lack of women participation in investments. Uh. How, how do you think we can improve that in some way? I think we like. Uh. I mean, when I thought about that tweet, I also discuss uh, with our team. Right. I think female participation in general labor force should increase. Right. And. then eventually once that happens there will be some lag of 10 15 years maybe uh, where women participate in investment uh, will slowly increase right uh, and obviously there are some platforms who are f- basically focusing on educating women and they like ho- i hope they are successful right uh, a lot of it actually like like interestingly what happens is like uh, why like in india we have see we see family as a unit right so We see husband and wife together managing that finance. So that asset allocation is together money of both, and that is managed generally happen to be a husband. Right? That's why it is low. Right? Uh, I think uh, once uh, like once women start taking more decisions, I think the uh, like and it's just a function of time. I think in ten fifteen years the picture will change anyway. Uh, and uh, for w- one of the like top of the funnel problem is more women should be part of. Uh, workforce right and then obviously as education happens as time passes a woman uh, will have more say or they will start managing managing actively right and and for, for like i think centuries now women have been very active in savings uh, in uh, a lot of our families our mothers are the savers uh, they save a lot of money but uh, uh, in investments like the growth of that money the, the participation has definitely been low and uh, participation can be increased to those things uh, and yeah i think i think we've covered it almost all uh, yeah amit amit is back Yeah, hi everyone. As you said, basically there is a traditional uh, tendency that we have to invest in the PPF and uh, FD, 
so so do you have any uh, like as a suggestion for like as a elders like as a if i uh, go to my father and said please invest in the liquidity asset or bond they will suggest me that you can invest in the ppf or fd so do you have any idea and suggestion to give those people like as a who belongs to small city they like as a scared to invest in the bond and like as a uh, share market i think i mean uh, especially for older people i i uh, like i don't think like that advice is very much valid for them not personally like keeping all money but like, uh, but to be on the safer side is always uh, always uh, recommended for especially elderly people right uh, i what like what has fundamentally change in this generation is like how how people like get jobs how people switch jobs how economy has changed right so asset management for younger people would be different right but uh, so like if you don't like if you're some let's say if you're a father you're talking to right and he has this advice that advice is still valid for him may not be valid for you uh, right so don't try to change his asset allocation i see lot of like i see i've seen couple of cases where people have gone on board and started managing uh, parents finance and very uh, like in a very aggressive way and that's not the right thing to do uh, for younger generation obviously i mean uh, market has fundamental change economy has fundamental change so how you manage personal finance will definitely change too yep, that's right uh, so this i have a, I, i wrote this down uh, so i have a very personal question uh, you, you have a startup so when you started out uh, as for everybody who has a startup or just starting out uh, how did you manage your personal finances i i uh, i think this question is like subject for uh, very early stage startups and uh, people who are uh, starting right out of college or like just one or two jobs uh, and how did you maintain liquidity uh, because liquidity is the most uh, difficult thing for us right now yeah i mean uh, like you have to save for that or you should have some other means for me like my wife uh, is a product manager so like she she has a job so i knew that there will be money coming in monthly and we could survive easily on that money so uh, but obviously it's not a very easy problem to solve right but like uh, it is very important to have that liquidity whether you are married or not or not you must have that kind of savings or that kind of access to money right it is not just question of lifestyle or like man- managing uh, a bare minimum lifestyle but it's also a very important question from a psychology point of view if you run out of if you think that you are running out of money just the thought of will start affecting your decision making right and that will impact the outcome of the startups so uh, people and i have made this mistake in my previous startup you generally think hey i am earning uh, let's say uh, 50000 or 1 lakh right i will only do do this 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 so i'll be only spending 10000 rupees per month right therefore i will like budget accordingly not the right way right as a founder you will have stress you will have lot of things so uh, you need to enjoy also right sometimes go out etc uh, so uh, you cannot just survive the point i was trying to make is like you need to enjoy you need to relax a bit and you should your liquidity should be according to that you should save saving should be according to that you cannot just say that i will you know survive on bare minimum right right awesome uh, i think i think we can um, we come to the like it's been almost an hour now uh, that we started this was an interesting very in depth conversation about tech fund bonds and everything uh, but any any ending note any ending note uh, from you ajit uh, no i think uh, like very important that uh, people like especially i mean uh, i guess most of the audience is young here so building right like people start looking at it very uh, from a very objective point of view saying ki itna return ye wo those are very secondary thing i think mental habits build karna is very important early in your journey right so i had written one tweet sometime back that even if you afford don't take iphone especially for young people right uh, right even if you have savings don't take right uh, the reason is uh, saving habit like getting your mind to uh, say like say more uh, like living life below your means is very important and that will create like that will make you financially independent much earlier than than any than anything else there are then uh, you know these uh, stocks or some some high returns kind of right uh, and these are basics in that they don't people look after right they think that 
आई विल इन्वेस्ट इन स्टॉक्स एटीन परसेंट रिटर्न आएगा फिफ्टीन परसेंट आएगा उसके लिए मैं ये रिस्क लेता हूँ आई विल डू दिस रिसर्च एंड ऑल एंड बट दे गाउट दे गो आउट एंड पार्टी लाइक हेल आई मीन I'm not saying don't party, but like save more. I mean that's 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 the that's what any young person should really really focus on, uh, bare minimum. And then all these things, like you keep optimizing, you keep figuring out better asset, investing in them, learning about new asset classes, etc. But if you're not saving enough, all these uh, all these won't matter a lot. right uh, so for invest first in building habits uh, and then invest for uh, gaining the returns yes. yeah thank you so much for coming in ajinga uh, and wind wealth uh, do do check out wind wealth everybody start like start by understanding and then uh, maybe put in small amount sure. and uh, yeah. yeah and uh, and also if you yeah. like if you have any doubts about wind wealth products uh, Feel free to reach out to us on our WhatsApp. It's there on the website homepage, right? And don't invest without understanding the risk, right? So uh, you can reach out to our team. Uh, they will get on a call, educate you about the risk involved, and then only choose whether to invest or not. Yes, yes. Uh, so thank you for joining us, Jinky. Uh, I'll just I'll just tell a little bit about Finflow. So Finflow has recently uh, launched our waitlist. Um, it's a app for easy to understand finance and investing content. Uh, just trying to help uh, people make better choices. Everything we do is around that only. So uh, everybody, uh, you can follow Jinky, Finflow, Finflow, and uh, yeah, join our waitlist. Uh, it's it's in the link in our bio. and yeah i think we can end this thanks to jinke for hey, joining thanks thanks, thanks for having me enjoyed this conversation thank you good night really enjoyed it thank you thank you bye i'll, I'll just leave this space on for a, for for some time so that people can just go on to finflow and join the waitlist it's in the bio and yeah uh, th- thank you all for sticking in i see so many people who stuck for uh, the whole conversation debt and uh, bonds all these things uh india is not very very aware about so yeah together we can start uh understanding about them these assets are good and these assets are very important and uh, yeah you can start allocating also uh, we will be doing like for for education purposes we will be doing a lot of threads on uh, finflow's account around debt uh, around fixed asset incomes whatever it is uh so yeah just follow finflow uh, follow just kira then this also follow us thank you for joining i'll just leave the space where you can just do the thing bye